everybody and welcome back. I just want to say I love all the comments you're leaving on my videos. It's really great to know that people are still here, you still appreciate what I do, and that I'm not all alone. <laughs> it's, it's nice to hear your opinions and uh, that you're excited for stuff like this. So somebody mentioned in the comments last time that they wanted to see Mars. I mean, I know you all want to see everybody, but let's do Mars next. So I've already drawn Mars before and he's got a nice headshot, so I'm going to stick him in with that but what I'm gonna do this time is draw a full body drawing of Mars so I don't know it's just something a little bit different I'm gonna draw it in the style that I did Venus in last time which is, I think is what I'm going to end up going with for the comics but I might do the lineless style which is like the daily horse drawings I do a lot of those horses don't have lines on the outside if you've noticed um, but it does take a little bit more time so I just need to have a test and you can all vote on it so let's get on to Mars so I feel like Mars is the kind of character that everyone either loves or hates. Wherever you stand with your opinion on him, he's a really interesting character to say the least. And while he might not be a main character, he still plays an important role in the story. Mars is about 17 years old when we first meet him in the comic, and he's the same age as Romulus. Originally in the Model Horse movie Conquering Tide series, he's played by the Briar model Hidalgo. And I chose to use Hidalgo because he was the closest model to what I imagined Mars to look like in my head. But now, of course, that I can create unique characters with the comics, Mars can finally be fleshed out in the form and colours I originally imagined him in. Mars is still a chestnut overo. He does have quite a unique marking on his face. He has what's called badger face markings. So he has white markings that grows across his eyes, but it's like a reverse blaze. You might recognize him from my current profile picture. He has wild, thick and unruly hair, which often has thorns and twigs stuck in it. He's not exactly one for keeping himself neat and tidy. That's like the least of his concerns. <laughs> Build and confirmation wise, he's like an American paint crossed with a Mustang. He's not the tallest horse. He's about sort of 15 hands high and has strong, stocky legs, slightly rounded features and a pretty big head. <laughs> He also has one of his teeth missing from an incident whilst messing around with Romulus when they first met when they were 13 years old. So he looks a little bit dorky. You might be wondering, so why did they meet at 13 years old? Why wasn't it before then? Well, here's a little bit of herd lore. I like to drop a little bit of the Conquering Tide lore in with each episode so that you kind of, you can, I'm dropping hints here and there of what's going on and what's changed in the new Conquering Tide. So you can expand upon your knowledge. A little bit of herd lore. The three herds meet up for a week or two every year to sort of keep the peace, tell, tell stories of their travels, educate each other on new discoveries and encourage the youngsters to either befriend each other or be rivals depending on you know, where that herd stands with what they promote. Those attending must be about 13 years of age. During the rest of the year the horses do live on their own territory. Whilst there are very rare occasions where a horse would be tempted to cross into another herd's territory as it has happened in the past, and sometimes drastic action is taken to ensure herd safety. That's why they have scouts. The scouts tend to gallop along the perimeters of the territory and just check that nothing dodgy is going on. But generally the horses of each herd have great respect for each other since they have no reason to fight and times have been peaceful for many years. That's not to say that that can't change though. Anyway, so back to Mars. So, personality-wise, Mars is a bit of a hotshot, or at least he thinks he is. Always has something to say and talks back. He doesn't tend to consider the consequences before blurting out what he's thinking. As you can imagine, this gets him into all sorts of trouble. He's a bit of a wisecracker and lives for the approvals of others around him, even if it means he has to make himself out to be a fool. So, he does appear to be an attention seeker at times. But even with all of his seemingly confident remarks, Mars can be deeply insecure. He has a massive fear of not being liked and can't stand being alone or even being silent, so prepare to have your ears talked off. He has a mother that's too soft and a mostly absent father that's too hard on him. And you'll see more of this in the comics. For Mars' personality, I picked Chaotic Neutral because his whole ethos revolves around how others see him. He almost always makes decisions based on what he thinks other horses will think of him rather than how he truly feels himself. Pleasing others and being liked is more important to him than expressing his true opinion. As a result, he can often change opinions and alliances. 
whilst he can be thoughtful sometimes, he can also be very selfish and very immature. You can never really predict what he's going to do next. I've also made some changes to the families and relationships in Conquering Tide, and this is just to give some of the characters a stronger bond and stronger ties to each other. And Mars is one of those characters. Mars is Ariston's older brother. I know, right? Mind blown. <laughs> Can you think of a more contrasted pair of characters? But this makes their relationship so much more interesting. It entices so many questions. Like, if Mars is so bold, why is Ariston so timid? How could they have turned out so differently living in the same herd and having the same parents? I guess you'll just have to watch Ariston's video to find out. You may also be wondering what's happening to the whole magic side of Conquering Tide. I mean, didn't all the horses have powers in the old Model Horse series? Didn't Mars have like fire abilities or something? Yes, but the magic side of things have changed completely. I'll be honest, this contributed to why I couldn't finish the Conquering Tide Model Horse series. I went completely overboard in the films and was out of my depths quickly, trying to figure out why all these horses had those powers and what would they be beneficial for, what the limitations on it. You know, I had some horses that could predict, you know, like read minds, Cleomenes could read minds, and that just got out of control because you you think, okay, if he can read minds, then he would, he's pretty much an unstoppable force in the herd. He could predict anything the other herd is doing or you know so it just got out of hand really quickly so there is a massive cap on magical abilities but anyway the whole system has changed and i guess you'll have to read the comics to find out more so thanks for watching this episode and uh tune in next time for more characters comment down below if you want to see a particular character next and uh, i'll see you guys soon